This is Andrew Ma here. I am uh, with RATS, a rotating turbo machinery society based in Edmonton. Um, basically, uh, we are a group of people that have got together uh, primarily for social events and networking type things. Um, starting back in 2004 and you know over the years we've added golf tournaments uh, we've added um, a technical conference workshops that happen on a biennial basis and now we've gone to these technical sessions which were bi-monthly um, in person meeting at so uh, polo social lounge in short part but now with the covid uh, situation we've gone online to keep our engagement up um, and so this is our first one so <laughs> you know we're amateurs so bear with us <laughs> I'm sure it's going to be you know uh, there'll be some uh, learning learning experience we had so I'll just wait for the slide to pop up so our mission here is to build community camaraderie in the rotating equipment industry, uh, sharing acquired knowledge, fostering education, career development through organized events with the support of industry sponsorship. So, um, you know, in a nutshell, that's pretty much what we do. Um, and I'll just, you know, spend, uh, you know, about five minutes, just, you know, let you know what we're doing, what RATS is. Uh, we also have uh, a few different places you can engage with us on LinkedIn, for instance, um, and our website. Um, so as I mentioned, there's a lot of things that we do. Um, this is our team here, and I just want to emphasize as well that everybody here are volunteers. Um, this is a nonprofit organization, and everybody does this, you know, solely for the purpose of uh, you know, for the industry, for, for getting to know people, for uh, sharing best practices, you know, having a forum for doing that. Um, you know, obviously there's the turbo machinery and, and pump symposium in, uh, in Texas and also the Calgary pump symposium in Calgary. Uh, so, you know, we like to complement that by having something in Edmonton locally. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, there are um, quite a few sponsors that help us out with, um, you know, the costs of, uh, of our events. And so, you know, throughout, you know, since 2004, we've had a lot of people really helping to, to keep this going. So uh, we'll see how long, you know, we can keep doing this in the future. And the other thing is uh, we started doing Student awards. We started handing out sponsor, uh, scholarships to students. Um, new for 2019 was that uh, we got involvement from uh, three of the local uh, institutions, Red Deer College, Nate, Northern Alberta Institute of Technology, and University of Alberta. So now they're uh, doing all the administering for us and we're providing the funds, which again, you know, a lot of that is coming from our MRO, for instance. Um, so, in any case, um, yeah, we're, we're proud to support students for their education. Uh, these are just some pictures from some of our previous technical sessions that we, we've done in the past. And, uh, you know, it's a, we do a quick presentation at the beginning and then at the, um, on the conclusion that we have a, a buffet set up and then uh, people are networking and you know meeting talking about whatever there's uh you know professional discussions and talk about whatever the golf tournament um unfortunately this year we had to cancel it uh we figured that was the best case even though courses are open now in alberta but uh as far as holding a tournament goes we just figured this is the, the best course of action uh, and have some more mug shots of some of the groups that were golfing uh, last year. I, I believe all these pictures are available on the website. As I mentioned, the MRO, uh, we are going to move that to an online webinar as well in the fall. Uh, we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, um, you know, how many days it's going to be spread out by or, or that sort of thing, but uh, it'll be very similar to this sort of format 
uh, with multiple presentations and, and probably half day workshops. Uh, typically, we usually host that at the Downtown Centennial Center in Fort Saskatchewan, and we've done that um, there for the last 2016, 2018, and 2014. We started off at the, uh, I guess it was the Silver, can't remember what they call it now, the Double Tree. It used to be called the Mayfield Inn. And something else that we uh, we're involved with is Wind House, and uh, they are a, a women's shelter that have been around since 1968. Uh, we've been, you know, doing uh, raffles and 50-50 draws at our golf tournaments, and uh, and you know, of course, uh, any funds that were, I guess, you know, uh, surplus from our events also went to Wind House as well. So we typically do a, a, an annual uh, donation to them. So. Uh, thank you for everybody from RATS that's helped to support this. And with that, I'm going to turn that over to Ralph now. Um, he's our technical director. He's going to introduce Derek and our topic for the day. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. And uh, welcome everyone to our uh, online version of our RATS uh, technical meetings, technical sessions. And uh, this is a uh, uh, first in, in a series of, as uh, long as this um, virus is, is around, we'll see how it, it morphs in, in the future. Um, we will be going to hopefully a monthly uh, frequency for these meetings. We're already uh, looking at uh, the June's meeting date. Let us know if you're experiencing any problems with the audio or, or the visual. Um, there are some things that you can do on your computer, like uh, uh, reduce the number of windows that you have open, and and uh, it's also very much contingent on how good your internet connection is is at home. Uh, your microphones will be muted, uh, but you have uh, uh, a chance to ask questions at any time. There is on the uh, uh, there's a chat box uh, which you can see. There's a little control bar should be on the right side of your screen where you could ask questions at any time during um, Derek's presentation. Uh, please hold on at the end of the, uh, the, the presentation. There, there will be a, a survey, questions for you to answer. There also will be a, an email sent to you with uh, uh, some survey questions there as well. So there might be a double, double grouping of, uh, of questions. Um, so not to take any more time away from, from Derek, from his presentation on advancements in uh, uh, mechanical seals, just to tell you a little bit about uh, Derek. He's a regional manager with uh, John Crane in Edmonton, and he has over 14 years of field experience with mechanical seals and related systems. He, his primary focus is on supporting the pipeline market in Western Canada, and uh, as well, he's also on the board of our local rotating equipment uh, turbo machinery society, RATS, here in Edmonton. He also volunteers for the Calgary Pump Symposium as well. He has a bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from the Technical University of Nova Scotia and has worked in the rotating equipment industry for 25 years. Let's turn it over to Derek. Hey, thank you everyone. Um, welcome to my home office uh, and thank you all for joining us today uh, for our first uh, RATS web webinar series. And uh, today's topic is advancements in light hydrocarbon mechanical seals and leakage containment and management. Uh, I've packed a lot of information into this slide deck. My plan is to provide a brief overview of uh, several new products that I have been an integral part of helping John Crane develop over the last uh, probably uh, five, six years kind of thing. So we've gone through a, a series of uh, R&D initiatives and come up with some pretty exciting products here uh, for the industry um, that can be, uh, we're looking forward to in the future, maybe rolling this out to other industries as well besides the pipeline market. But for now, that's what we focused on. Um, maybe to start with, Andrew, did you want to do a survey before we get into things or do you want, we had a survey, I think you wanted to, 
roll with there quickly. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, let's just do that somehow. Here. I guess before we get into that, I just wanted to comment as well. Uh, there are two handouts that are in the uh, drop down box there on the side that you can download to your system uh, on your own whenever you feel like throughout the presentation. One's a technical uh, product uh, review, basically, of our product, some information there, and uh, the other is a brochure. Um, so you're welcome to download those, those as you wish. And uh, throughout the slide deck, there'll be some links I put in there uh, that uh, you could go online and look at some YouTube stuff that we have as well on our U John Crane YouTube channel. I'd like to promote that as well, that uh, is good for learning um, and different stuff. So they'll be in there and then the slide deck will be uploaded to the RAT site afterwards. Okay, it looks like the votes have stopped coming in. So I'm gonna close the polls now. And uh, so bear with me here, I gotta see how Share. Okay, there we go. There's our percentages. How do I? Okay. Um, I can't see those, Andrew. Can you read them out? Read them out, please. I can't view them here for some reason. Oh, sure. Okay. So, uh, so the first category, not at all, but I should know more, is 5%. Somewhat, I've learned about them, 30%. Familiar, I've selected or installed them, 5%. Very familiar, I'm involved in rebuilding or troubleshooting, 35%. And expert, I've designed or know best practices, 25%. So quite a, quite a few knowledgeable people in the audience, so that's fantastic. Okay, I've turned that back over to you now. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Uh, let's keep rolling here. So. Uh, next is the roadmap for today, I call it. That's the agenda and uh, what we're going to be looking at. So uh, part of that is I'm going to just do a brief safety moment and then just talk a little bit about John Crane, one brief slide on that, and uh, focus on um, some of the other uh, mechanical seal related things that we've gone through in the R&D process and design challenges, some history. Um, I, I've, I've consolidated, like I say, five slide decks into one. I think I said that already. And uh, so the, I just wanted to give everybody a high level overview of uh, several new product uh, initiatives that we've come out with lately for uh, crude oil and light hydrocarbons. And as well uh, on the end of the conversation, we'll talk about secondary containment seals for um, managing leakage and, and controlling it, uh, any, any normal leakage or uh, when upset conditions arise and you need to have a backup seal for that. So safety, um, just we're all kind of working at home lately because of the COVID-19 and uh, there's some things that uh, we can do better uh, to maintain our ergonomics and, and backs while we're, and necks while we're working at home. So I thought this was a, a nice slide to demonstrate that. So sometimes we don't realize our posture uh, can really affect how our backs feel throughout the day uh, as we're working at home and cause extra tiredness. So. You know, it's nice to uh, make sure you're looking at the monitor properly sitting upright and uh, maybe also look at uh, raising the level of your monitor if you're able to do that because it's better to look straight forward than down. Uh, same for your cell phone, lift it up more instead of looking down all the time, which is an easy habit to get into. Just a brief overview of John Crane's global network. Uh, we're a fairly large company, 6,700 employees globally. Uh, 2300 in North America and uh, we have several global uh, uh, manufacturing centers and our global headquarters are in is in Chicago Illinois uh, we have uh, numerous test rigs um, and uh, R&D centers and CNC's you can see the quantities at the top there for our global support so getting into uh, the presentation um, the pipeline mechanical seal application considerations uh, and so this is a listing of some of the various things to consider when designing a mechanical seal for the pipeline industry and uh, actually most of these are universal considerations for uh, lots of other applications that are out there so there's some pr pretty generic stuff in here to consider uh, when we're looking at any application uh, but there are some specific things to the pipeline industry that I'll cover in the next slide as well 
pipelines present a, a unique challenge on their own. So uh, they don't operate like a refinery. Um, this is a listing of some of the various design challenges we face when considering how to design mechanical seal for the pipeline industry, which uh, makes this uh, application very unique versus a refinery. So we have uh, multi-phase batch operations. Uh, we have pumps in series. Uh, refineries do not operate pumps in series typically. It's very unusual, but it's very common in the pipeline industry. So you, each pump in that series of pumps, they could have three, they could have four. Um, we'll experience various inlet pressures and discharge pressures uh, associated with, with each, and they expect one mechanical seal to operate in all instances uh, for each pump the same. Uh, there, so that's that's one of the uh, unique design challenges that we have to face. And then in other cases, they'll switch uh, products they're pumping from uh, jet fuel to diesel to uh, NGL, condensate, crude oil, um, ethane. There's all kinds of different products that a, a pipeline can can pump or batch together. And so they'll, they'll expect the pumps to start and stop um, no matter what, depending on what product they're pumping through. So we uh, we need to look at uh, other things as well. Of course, uh, high viscosity startups when you talk about crude, um, other products not so much. Um, pressure ratings, in a lot of cases, they have remote unmanned pumping stations. So there's nobody there specifically at that station to monitor how things are going or listen to pumps or get any indication back personally what's happening at that station. Everything's controlled from a central uh, control center where they have uh, instant, instantation that uh, feeds them back the details and what's happening from pressures, temperatures, flows with those pumps so they can operate them effectively. Sometimes they'll start up on a soft start like a VFD and uh, in other situations with what we've encountered in the field is some of this equipment as it's started and stopped and and um, running at different speeds on different batches, you'll get the, the pumping shaft will tend to move and adjust itself depending on process inlet conditions and what they're currently experiencing with the type of product and how viscous it is. So we get some movement around and that leads into where we went with this product development is to address that issue specifically. So on this slide, you'll see a, uh, a second, I can move some things out of the way here. Um, bear with me a second, technical difficulties. Uh, when we view the pipeline applications, we try to categorize them in the, the following four categories, um, with each having its own set of challenges. So we have uh, for crude oil, refined products, flashing hydrocarbons, and then of course the most difficult is the supercritical fluids. Um, and uh, we, we look at, in each of those categories, there's things to, to keep our eyes on. So you have varying viscosities when it comes to crude oils, or you, you know, they're unable to uh, to clean process fluid via filtration or cyclone separators effectively. Um, I'm not going to read all these off; you can read them for yourself. But uh, and for refined products, they're uh, typically lower upper rating pressures, not up where the pressures are of the crude oil because of the specific gravity of the products are lower. Uh, we have high vapor pressure margins, um, and then you get into, of course, the flashing hydrocarbons, which uh, um, uh, highly uh, uh, volatile liquids, which have poor liquid, uh, poor lubricating properties. And so we have to deal with that. They're, they're very light and they tend to flash off easily and they can do phase changes across the seal face. So that's a, a significant design challenge that we have to take into consideration. So what we started with designing our new products for was the crude oil pipelines. And that was our primary focus in the beginning because it seemed like they were having the most difficulty with reliability on seals. And we thought we could really dig into that and make a, a, a difference there. Uh, so we took the product that we designed for there and expanded it into refined products and flashing hydrocarbons. So I'll, I'll run uh, through each of those in the next upcoming slides. Okay, so then uh, uh, when we view this from the perspective of the mechanical seal, and support system designs that fit each of the specific product categories. The following information is a list uh, of typical options we can consider for each pipeline application. So we'll look what would the what we look at is a combination of what mechanical seal to use and what API piping plan to use. So you'll see listed off in each of these categories the various piping plans that you could use. And also if you use a single seal or dual unpressurized seal or pressurized seal arrangement. 
So I'm not sure of everybody's experience on the phone today for the training, but um, we have a variety of different seals that can be applied depending on what you're trying to do and uh, how hazardous the service is or uh, what other issues you may be facing that you have to address with a specific piping plan or a specific seal if you need a dual unpressurized for safety, better safety monitoring or a dual pressurized um, because the product is not that easy to deal with and uh, it's easier to have it on uh, what I call an artificial life support system which is a self-lubrication lubrication panel of a plant 54 or 53B. So there's a variety of things that we look at there. Next is a little bit of a history. So uh, I've been involved with this process the entire way along. So this shows some of the historic milestones we have gone through over the years as part of the development process showing roughly when um, we started some of the R&D focused on the pipeline industry and uh, where we are today. Along the way, we have participated in some presentations at the TPS and, and at the CPS in Calgary. TPS is the Turbo Pump Symposium in Houston and the CPS is the Calgary Pump Symposium, for those who don't know that. And uh, we've presented at both those. Um, so along the way, we've, we've taken this product from 2015, um, where we, we designed a new seal for the crude oil pipeline industry, started that process, I should say, uh, to when we first did field trials in November 2017 and uh, initiated that. And we've had those seals installed now since then and have taken them out for inspections and they looked absolutely great when we inspected them. Um, they could have literally been wiped off and put back in again. And uh, after I think it was over 500 starts and stops. So uh, I would call that a success so far. And uh, the industry has really noticed. And of course, we're getting lots of requests um, to supply that product. Uh, this next slide is a uh, see, what I call seeing is believing. <laughs> And I thought these photos would help to show what happens behind the curtain at John Crane, because uh, a lot of folks don't know what uh, we specifically do here or how we test stuff on a test rig. And uh, this is what the test rigs actually look like. Uh, I'm sure some of you are surprised because uh, I know when I'm talking to lots of customers, they expect that our test rigs are an actual pump in our shop and uh, we might have a VFD on it to run it up the various RPMs and, and mimic exactly what's going on. However, there are so many pump sizes and types out there, it's, it's impossible for us to take a, a pump into our facility and, and uh, run it like a, a pump OEM would run it on a, a dynamic test with various seals and then hook up enough instrumentation to do that properly. So we like to create our own um, modified seal chamber. So we, it's a lab environment. We can, we can design that ourselves. hook up any instrumentation we would like, control any variable we would like, pressure, temperature, flow, viscosity. You might need heat exchangers uh, in, in this loop. So we can, we can uh, calibrate and control all kinds of different stuff to make this seal, um, I guess I should say torture test the seal, <laughs> to make sure it's gonna perform on the most extreme conditions or the most minimal conditions requirements. So it has the capability to handle a variety of anything. Next, uh, I'm gonna be introducing you to our first, uh, like the NPSS, which is the non-pusher secondary seal. And it was initially developed for the crude oil market, as I was mentioning earlier. And uh, we call that product the 8648 VRS. And it was initially developed to provide a robust seal installation solution for the crude oil pipelines located in North America and Canada. And so far it's expanded outside the North American market and now is going global as well. Um, so this is based on uh, our exclusive John Crane seal, secondary seal technology, which is the NPSS is what we re refer to it. We all love our acronyms in this business and that's one of our acronyms. Uh, the seal addresses typical causes of equipment failure experience in the industry. Um, for more information, these, as I mentioned earlier, these links are here for you to log on to our YouTube channel and this product specific page if you're interested. Um, keep in mind, this is a unique solution to John Crane that we have uh, 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 developed ourselves, so uh, no other seal vendor has this currently, and it is patent patented. The uh, the customer experience. So this all start this R and D process needs to start somewhere. So and I was proud to be part of it in the very beginning and in initiation initiating the conversation around how do we solve this problem. So uh, this this uh, uh, the following are a few pictures that demonstrate. Um, 
some of the most extreme examples of what we saw during the seal inspections that helped develop our understanding so we could focus on important aspects of the seal that impacted reliability. And uh, when we really started doing these seal inspections, we kept noticing over and over again that debris was collecting in this area around the dynamic O-ring and the springs, which caused hang up, which caused uh, erosion of that seal surface that was expected to move. So that O-ring that we're specifically pointing to there is a unique O-ring in our product called a dynamic O-ring. And we expect that to do a lot for us. It, uh, it needs to be able to move back and forth every time that shaft on that pump, which it's connected to, moves back and forth, it has to follow it uh, 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 lockstep. Uh, any, any change at all, uh, it needs to move. So if there's debris around it, of course, it's going to cause problems and pack up in that area and wear down. And it's, it's not going to live very long. It's like the tires of your car on the pavement. Um, they have O-rings would have a, a limited life in a, in a normal static service, uh, let alone put them in a dynamic service. And uh, you can literally calculate uh, at 36 RPM at uh, one to two thou. Um, it's like that O-ring driving down the road for many, many miles, sliding on its surface. And eventually it wears down over time. Uh, some more examples of, uh, of pictures, close-up pictures of the O-rings at the top. Number one and number two are that fretting wear I was telling you about. So it was identified as the primary cause of failure on many uh, seal inspections. Below are some of the parts, uh, hardware of the mechanical seal where that O-ring was impacting as well. So number three is a what we call a stub sleeve where that O-ring was riding on and is expected to move back and forth. So we, the dark area there you can see is a coating we put in that area to help um, delay the erosive effects of that O-ring moving and friction effects. And then on number four, you can see the debris uh, close up of that. So those were some ma uh, magnetic, what we call like a, um, welding slag after initial construction of a pipeline. When they start a pipeline up, you can expect to see sometimes uh, additional welding debris where they, put the pipes together and build the tanks and stuff in the pipeline that needs to flush its way out of the system before uh, you know they run on a clean process fluid. So that takes a bit of time after initial startup, but our product, uh, the, the new product that we have is designed to, to handle all that stuff. That was our goal. So this leads into, uh, I guess, where we're, where we're going with this. So uh, the example on the screen here is of yesterday versus today. So you can see the, the original uh, seals that I was inspecting year after year, and then go on to the uh, new technology, which we developed to replace that dynamic O-ring completely. Um, so after some hard internal selling uh, and significant focus and many meetings and many hours invested, I'm proud to announce, to announce we are much further along on our R&D journey. Um, so above is an example, uh, step one of our R&D journey, designing out the dynamic O-ring and replacing with, with something more reliable. How does it work? So the NPSS, um, this is a depiction of the pressure forces on the NPSS, specifically those orange arrows. So it replaces the O-rings. We redesigned the stub sleeve to fit it in there better. Uh, and there was many uh, ups and downs along the R&D process of figuring out how to make this work. Uh, we uh, kind of took the original concept from our type one, type two seal philosophy of a bellows, but that original bellows had a convolution in it. And after about 700 PSI of pressure, that convolution would collapse and the flexibility was completely gone. So what we did is we went back to the drawing board after numerous tests on that original design of a type one, type two seal, trying to expand it from 700 PSI capability up to 1400 PSI capability. And uh, eventually after uh, uh, numerous meetings and back and forth and, and throwing ideas at the wall uh, and brainstorming, we come up with this design, uh, took the entire team to, uh, to, to figure this one out. So, um, and, uh, and several years along the way just to try to figure out how to make this work. So I'm proud that we're finally here to um, develop this product. So next, I'm gonna, it may be a bit challenging. I'm gonna stop sharing my uh, video. And uh, before I start this video, I plan to shut down my video and save bandwidth and where we started afterwards. So this is a 30 second clip showing how the NPSS works. I will 
talk through the animation explaining what to focus on as we go. It may be a bit stuttier on your end. Um, so what you're looking at here is the animation of uh, 3D animation over this product. Uh, starts at the outside. You can see it rotating. That uh, mini ring rotates with the sleeve, which rotates with the pump shaft. It's all connected to what we call the primary ring, which is the other large face at the center of the screen. So it's expected to be a static face, but it moves back and forth following the shaft. And you'll see that green um, NPSS flexing every bit of the way. Every time that shaft moves, it flexes and follows it. Sticks to it like glue. So that's that's uh, that's the magic. And next. And Derek, I'll, I'm glad to say that that video actually was really smooth this time. It's better than our, our rehearsal. <laughs> that was good. Excellent. That's good to, good to hear. I'm never sure how these videos are going to play out. Anything else, Andrew, before we keep going that you want to, is there another survey or anything? I wasn't sure. Like well, that? there was just uh, the general one. We can do that at the end with the- Okay. That's good. Sounds good. Um, hopefully everything's going okay for everybody on here and you can all hear me properly. And uh, I do have a habit of talking fast. Um, so I'm trying to slow down and- uh, Well, feel so free chat or the questions if there's anything that comes up during the presentation you know um feel free to interrupt and we can uh address those things as they come yes exactly so derek you can it's type Ralph something. Here. yeah i have a question is is that uh, flex element glued to the to the seal ring it's actually not glued i know i did happen to kind of indicate that it's not actually glued um it's it's uh, held on by pressure. To, the, to the sleeve, there's two things that act on it, pressure and there's actually a metal band that goes around it on the ID to hold mm -hmm. it tightly against the sleeve um, and keep it in position. And then when it's flexing against the uh, primary ring, we call that surface, it actually can, can slide along it back and forth. It's not glued and we specifically didn't glue it because we, we need that whole front. It's the, the only part that stays static is the part attached to the sleeve. The rest of it is expected to flex and move is, is our goal in this whole situation. So it doesn't bind up and, and cause hang up. And it has a lot of flex built into it. Actually, I, I forget the exact number for the amount of flex, um, uh, but it's, it's huge. Thank you. Thanks, Ralph. The, uh, so leading along the journey, um, step two of this evolutionary process of the NPSS, uh, was to expand the product coverage so that we could apply the same technology to light hydrocarbons with various specific gravities. And uh, so then uh, what we needed to do is, is look at in our product capabilities, what do we have that'll work for light hydrocarbons? Because the crude oil version, which I didn't allude earlier, has two hard faces, silcar, silcar, that rub against each other because crude oil is very abrasive and uh, uh, and, and, and the viscosity is very high and the pressures are higher. So we went with um, our Silcar product uh, material mix for that. Now, once we look at the light hydrocarbons, we have to deal with uh, flashing, um, lack of lubrication, and we have to figure out how to deal with that. And to deal with that, we pick materials that uh, have some uh, either lift off of uh, technology or uh, natural lubrication. So carbon, uh, is uh, has some natural lubrication to it um, and doesn't generate as much friction. The friction force of carbon is much lower. So we picked that for uh, some of the light in pipelines, uh, mainly refined products. And then once you get into uh, flashing hydrocarbons that uh, can cause more issues, we would look at applying a laser face, which is a pretty unique technology to John Crane and it's lift off technology. I'll show you pictures of that later. And uh, so what we did is we took those two materials of faces and applied the same NPSS dynamic element to it to make those last longer. This slide gives you uh, an overview of the pipeline market and miles in North America and uh, our product focus. So you can see down below in the bar, uh, sorry, the uh, pie chart that uh, this breaks down uh, refined products, crude oils and NGLs by uh, pipeline mileage. 
and it's pretty supply surprising how much um, uh, it's almost evenly split between all three categories in North America. That's a 2017 um, um, numbers that we're looking at there too. So uh, above that, you'll see that depending on the product, uh, we pick a different primary seal, which is the, the main process seal to deal with that product. And we would pick a different containment device. So this is kind of how the John Crane logic goes when we're selecting a seal for an application, we need to kind of ta tailor our products to meet the application that it's going into. So each one has its unique characteristics that we need to, uh, to deal with. So, um, Later on, I'll be talking about the containment devices, and but right now we're still focusing on the primary seal. This slide uh, demonstrates, so uh, we have two carbon versions available in 15 um, uh, identified sizes that we've developed. One is for non-flashing hydrocarbons above 0.65 specific gravity, and we uh, have nicknamed that the 8648 VLE for light ins and one for flashing hydrocarbons below 0.65 specific gravity and we've nicknamed that the hvl for highly uh, volatile liquids and uh, so we've got again it tells you we have two face materials for that down below you'll see pictures of what the it's not a very good one but i'll show you a better one later of the laser face technology and uh, a full picture of um, our proposed um, flashing uh, light hydrocarbon seal, uh, what you or it could be either version of it actually, because you wouldn't tell until you were able to look at the actual face that's on that uh, 3D, 3D cutaway there. But you can see the backup seal there too that we've developed, both have the NPSS um, associated to it. This is our seal face technology um, that we would look at when we're trying to decide uh, how to design that seal. So you can see there's a lot of choice. Um, so not just materials of, of selection, but we also have physical differences that we can design into each face, which uh, adds another level of complexity in how you think about the seal, how you think the seal is gonna work or function. You wanna pick the right combination. Now, the red ones that I've highlighted here, are the ones that we focused on so far for the light hydrocarbon services. And uh, uh, in the future, I know you guys probably have heard a lot about diamond. Uh, we are also looking at that and applying that also. Um, but for now, uh, so far we've done the laser face and the bi-directional groove for the, for the uh, containment seal. And uh, here are the focus design features that we have chosen for the seal design. Some, um, so I'll, I'll read through some of these and just cover them off briefly. So we have some principal design features we'd like to build into this thing when we're looking at this. So it's a flexible elastomer, uh, it needs to be flexible. And uh, uh, the lug drive, uh, which is a the way our primary ring is designed, it has larger drive lugs because it needs to stay in one location. So we want it to, that be, to be as beefy as possible to prevent wear in that area. Um, and then we look at uh, a rotating mating ring design, helps that, helps with cooling and uh, uh, permits use at higher shaft speeds. Uh, we've uh, adapted the laser face to the seal for fluids less than 0.65 SG. Uh, we've gone with a harder elastomer, a 90 shore elastomer. Uh, for robust construction, um, the what else can I say here? So the uh, robust drive, and it's based on the other thing to tell you for the light hydrocarbons. It's based on the original 8648 VRS design, which uh, we've actually had uh, field experience with so far, and it's proven itself well. Of course, with any new R&D that we take on, uh, our customers ask us to prove the concept works. So before they just, we just uh, say we'd like to do this and they jump to it and install it in the field. Um, it's really good to do that lab testing and we've torture tested these seals in various applications in our controlled lab. However, it, it doesn't, you know, it still needed to be field tested. So we've done that afterwards. Um, as well uh, with uh, with our product. So 
we can control everything in the lab. It kind of creates the ideal conditions. And uh, what we have gone, done tons of starts and stops, ran it for lots of hours, uh, physically taken everything apart after each test, inspected it, taken photos, uh, determined if there's something we could improve upon after each test. And along the way, uh, throughout this process, there has been significant, uh, I guess I'll call them learning events that we've gone through um, as we discover something doesn't work like we thought and we have to kind of switch um, our, our thought process and, and decide to do something a bit differently. So um, I'm not sure if any of you have been involved with R&D in the past, but it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting path. You go down and you got to take the turns when the turns come up and take the forks on the road when the forks on the road come up and figure out where you're going to go next uh, with the product development. So on this one, we've done uh, several different shaft, shaft sizes, 5.51 and 3.76, fully tested. Dynamic pressures, which is what would be expected on the pipelines, is 50 to 1175 PSIG, which is where I was alluding to with the uh, and pumps in series. It needs to work at all pressures uh, uh, well. And then, of course, static pressure, if everything's shut in, um, needs to we usually have that higher than the dynamic pressure. Uh, also speed is, is critical. So what did we test these these materials on? Uh, for the carbon face, we tested it on kerosene and diesel. Um, and then for the laser face, we tested that on propane to uh, represent the uh, uh, different services with the different SGs to see how they would handle. And currently this particular product is patent pending. The original uh, crude oil seal is patented. And uh, note below, successfully tested beyond maximum expected conditions. The uh, laser face technology, just to talk about that a little bit in detail, because you couldn't really see it on the previous slides. This is a demonstration of what we expect this laser face to, to work like. So below, you'll see how the fluid comes in, uh, where the rectangular or square notches are in the face and uh, that brings fluid in it goes across the face lifts up and then the other uh, crescent moon shaped area will um, help push some of that fluid back and, and lift off and uh, and help everything function properly in light hydrocarbons now on the on the lower uh, right hand section there there is a chart which focuses on heat generation and leakage uh, you'll see the laser face does very well compared to other types of face uh, geometries so we have a plane face with no profile on it um, then we have a hydrodynamic groove um, so uh, then you get more leakage with that if you have if the grooves aren't functioning as you would expect or, you, or they're too deep or something, you could have additional leakage, which you'd need to be able to manage and handle. So that, that covers off, so far we've covered off um, the process seals and uh, for light hydrocarbons and crude. And uh, next, I'd like to take you into the leakage containment and management and just briefly cover that also. Yeah, Derek, just a time check. It's uh, about quarter two. Okay. The uh, almost done here. And the uh, so we get into the non contacting setting containment seal. Uh, we call it the VSC. Um, so it's also unique. Show you that as well. We've done numerous tests and hours in our lab, uh, making sure that this thing is put through the paces uh, and torture tested, it, so to speak, at uh, various pressures. Water pressure was tested on on the secondary containment seal so that we wanted to mimic if you had a complete failure of your process seal it would be able to handle um, uh, full pressure of what you're throwing at it for leakage uh, in a catastrophic event um, also uh, this thing would normally lift off it's a non-contacting lift off seal which would under uh, non-wet conditions would basically lift off and this next slide goes into the design principles of that. So it's a Christmas tree pattern on that face. And it, this is applied again to the secondary ceiling area for containment. And uh, the port out the top would be used for pressure indication or leakage indication and taken away to your flare. And uh, you could contain your leakage that way. 
So um, this is a bi-directional design, which makes it very unique. So you do not need a different set of seal faces or seals designed specifically for each end of your pump. And uh, it's also uh, comes with our NPSS technology there. Oops, did I go too far? No. We've uh, gone through, uh, this is the test summary from those, ran uh, 23 tests, so one, sh one shaft size, 10 tests on the other shaft size um, at various pressures and speed ranges. And uh, to note on this slide is the number of start and, star start and stop cycles. Um, the, um, the seal, uh, when you look at it, entirely this is a blown up uh, 3d view of what it looks like um, so i'm pointing to several areas there the inboard process seal so everything on the left hand side of the seal would be running on your product um, and uh, that seal set of seal faces is expected to deal with the product the uh, npsss is in both locations the uh, 8628 vsc is on the containment seal and uh, the port at the top would be a plan 76 port which would take away your leakage to uh, um, a safe collection area could be a flare um, another leakage det containment and detection device that we've looked at improving upon is the api plan 66a um, this was rolled out many years ago by api and uh, with limited um, details on the scope and, and expected um, results. So what we ended up doing is, is looking at this in detail and figuring how can John Crane make this better? And uh, we've taken this to the next level with our new uh, 66A design, secondary containment bushing, and I'll walk you through that a little bit. This is some sketches of some of the initial bushing designs. So what we looked at doing is we had to improve what our bushing capabilities were in the first place for pressure handling um, to prevent catastrophic breakage and uh, how do you load it um, um, all kinds of different things we, we we threw at this idea and concept as we went through the I thought this was an interesting slide to show the R&D process of course this is uh, so this walks you through the performance requirement for the 66a so it's got it's supposed to allow all normal leakage to drain without generating pressure and it's going to prevent normal leakage from existing pump case and direct it to the drain where it can safely be managed it's going to provide a pressure signal when the primary seal is compri compromised it's going to restrict full pressure dynamic leakage during detection and shaft goes down it's going to restrict full pressure static leakage during pump isolation so this is critical this is protecting the environment and this is protecting people that are around this pump and then it's going to restrict leakage from the pump case during catastrophic and post catastrophic uh, the uh, structural and operational integrity up to 150 percent of maximum process pressure so we've taken this to the extreme to make sure it will still be intact at the highest pressures Optionally, uh, we've looked at uh, we like it to restrict leakage past the second bushing if the first seal bushing fails, uh, full dynamic and static pressure. So we want everything to go to drain and nothing to escape past it. That was an optional uh, piece that we put in there, and we actually accomplished that, um, which I was very delighted with. So expected retesting results. It uh, it triggers the alarm. Um, we wanted it to contain post catastrophic failure up to 15 minutes while it, it, that would mimic a pump shutdown because you, if you picture a, a large 42 inch pipeline and the size of valves on that it can take three minutes to isolate that pump completely and uh, depressurize so we needed to make sure these it's just a bushing was going to be alive for that entire process and stay structurally intact so it did not fail and cause uh, environmental uh, leakage or uh, or safety issues um it's uh we've tested it at numerous pressures to make sure it worked at all pressures and uh, did some endurance testing 500 hours normal operating conditions 1200 coast downs and restarts 30 seconds to three seconds um it was tested beyond the maximum conditions this is a little video and i think i have one or two slides after that and that's it so i'll talk through this as we go I actually forgot to turn my video on before, didn't I? I shut it off last time, so I'm gonna do that. Okay. 
Should be running. Why is it not running? There it goes. So the app, what we're to watch for is the application of full pressure, contents, atmospheric leakage, leak vessel, change in speed, drive belt slippage, and shutdown. So I'll talk through those as we, as we go. So you can hear the noise in the background of our equipment running. Hopefully it's not too noisy on your end, um, but it, I wanted it there to show you the belt slippage in the end. We have a leakage collection for atmospheric leakage and a drain, which is where we are designing this thing to send all leakage in a catastrophic event to the drain system, which would normally be taken off to a collection sump somewhere where you can safely uh, contain it and uh, deal with it later when you have time to deal with it. So as you see now, they're pressuring up the orange highlighted area is pressuring up to 1500 PSI. That's more than what pipelines are normally uh, going to see uh, in a catastrophic failure event. Pipelines typically operate at a, normally at about uh, 1400 PSI or 1200 PSI in that range. And then uh, you'll see the liquid actually um, starts to change color. So what that means is there's a this is a carbon bushing inside of there. We start out with clean royal purple um, and a pretty thick royal purple too. It's 910 for this test. And what happens during the test, that bushing clamps down on the sleeve that it's rotating with. And once it clamps down, it almost acts like brakes on a car. And the carbon dust starts to come off that bushing and collect within the uh, um, the uh, drain. So what he was just highlighting there with the camera, he zoomed in on the leakage past the secondary bushing. So that would represent the atmosphere. So what we're delighted to show you here is that nothing escaped outside of this uh, secondary bushing, which means you have no oil on the ground, no reportable event, and uh, um, you should be able to send your maintenance team out uh, after everything's been isolated and safely replace the seal without having a, a major leak to the environment is, is what our whole goal was in designing this thing. And you have to also make take notice that this is just a bushing. It's not a secondary full mechanical seal. So um, to see that we could do with this with a piece of carbon and reinforced metal around it uh, was pretty amazing. It uh, exceeded my expectations when we first started going through the R&D process. And uh, down below, we this this uh, has been sped up a bit. It shows five minutes, but this is actually just a three-minute clip. You're next, you're going to hear the dry belt start slipping because that's the torque. You'll notice the RPM is starting to trim down. We're mimicking the operation control room shutting off the pump and starting the isolation process. So they've turned off the, the driver and uh, started shutting this thing down. However, they haven't fully isolated the pump yet. So the pressure itself has to slowly come down also. Um, as you turn down the RPM on this motor, it actually generates a lot of torque. The seal itself is uh, is, is generating that torque and it's kind of like because of that brake uh, effect of the bushing clamping down on the sleeve, it's actually creating a lot of drive torque. I think the video is almost done. Yep, that's it. Oh, on the next slide. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much the last slide and there's questions after this. So the uh, this just gives you an overview of what we've designed with this uh, enhanced 66A that um, uh, we've gone through the R&D process on. We tried to keep the bushing uh, simple in design concept. So it's a reinforced carbon bushing. The light shaded area on the outside is a reinforcing band. Um, and the uh, dark shaded area below is the uh, carbon of course and uh, uh, it's a pretty unique design uh, we've used identical bushings both in and out so that there's no way to mix them up when you go to assemble a seal or or uh, ideally it keeps it simple by design uh, some of the simplest inventions out there are, are just that they're simple there's not a lot to them so um, the less complex you make it the better it'll work is what our thinking was of course this also incorporates the NPSS um, and uh, you can see at the top, we've indicated that you would normally put a pressure monitor 
which indicates the leakage uh, ahead of that first bushing. So the first bushing, bushing's purpose is, is to uh, keep as much of that leakage on the left-hand side of that drying as possible in that process seal area and, pre and help protect the secondary bushing. Um, so that if anything does get past that first bushing, it's breaking down the pressure significantly because it's got to squeeze itself around it through a torturous path somewhat, right? That's being compressed and pushed together. And uh, any leakage that gets past there automatically just goes to drain. And that's how we'd like it to work. So that pretty much concludes the presentation for the today. And if you have any questions or would like more information, now is the time to uh, raise the questions, or you can get a hold of me at my uh, email address on the uh, on the page there. Thank you very much, and uh, appreciate you tuning in for our first webinar uh, through the Wat Rats series of webinars. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Derek, for your presentation. It was very uh, informative. Um, I did have a question about it. Uh, like, what was what was the toughest part? of this new product development process? Um, it was it was uh, quite challenging. Uh, it was interesting to be involved with it. And uh, I think you have to be persistent is one key thing, because you have your, your vision or your dream of where you want to go with this product, but um, along the whole, the way uh, uh, and, the, and the months and, and uh, years that go by, when you're testing these sort of things, you run into roadblocks and you need to figure out how to overcome those road roadblocks. So you need to uh, be creative and uh, not give up on your end goal uh, in lots of cases and, and just keep pushing through. Uh, no matter what kind of adversity you face, um, I think that's that's one of the keys when you're trying to create something new is is there will be roadblocks and they'll some will be big some will be small and you will have to figure out how to get around each and every one of those um, along the way thanks Ralph yeah I have another question but maybe Andrew do you do you have anything that you uh, had come in yeah there's a couple of questions and you know to be honest I'm not sure if you can see them so uh, there was the one question I'm going to unmute Dustin Stewart here from Suncor he had a question about <laughs> Go ahead, Dustin. Yeah, hey, thanks you guys for the presentation, for putting it on and for, for giving it to Derek. Uh, my name is Dustin. I'm a, a reliability engineer out at the uh, Suncor refinery in Edmonton. Um, I was wondering about the, the flex ring, if uh, what the material it was. And then uh, I guess secondly, uh, the other question I had for you, Derek, was uh, noting that you guys kind of developed this um, following a, a string of uh, O-ring hang-up related failures on, on you know, previous seals. Um, any thoughts about using this technology in place of, I guess, where you'd use a, a bellows designed seal right now? Um, so I'll answer part one there. The, uh, the material for, for the, uh, the elastomer, the bellows right now, or the NPSS, I'll call it, it's what we prefer to call it, um, is is Viton, um, so it's 90 durometer Viton, and it is it's low temp Viton also. And then part two of the question is um, looking at it for other applications. I, I think that's what you're indicating, um, using it for. Uh, um, I think we see potential for other applications out there, and uh, we're looking at expanding it uh, as well as part of the next stage of the R&D on this thing and seeing else, where else we could apply um, the pipeline technology to like a refinery or an upgrader in, in their applications. So uh, I would say the future is open <laughs> where we can take this. Cool, right on, thank you. Uh, Andrew, you said you had another one? Yeah, there's, um, let's see, what other questions do we have here? I think I saw, Brian Dyne had his hand up, I believe. Um, how, about, how about if I jump in just uh, because this presentation was on the new, uh, more on the uh, light ends uh, application. Uh, now the crude oil has been tested since uh, about 2017. 2017. Yep. Yeah, 2017. Um, what's, what's the experience on the light ends applications? Uh, nobody wants to be the first to put it into their pump. <laughs> they don't want to take the risk. So uh, what, what, what do you have for us there, uh, Derek? 
Well, uh, I'll say we're still working on, on finding our first trial, field trials for that product. So, um, so far it's been lab trials and we're completing, we've already completed all the testing required on that to prove that it works and proof of concept within the, the lab. Um, we're looking at finding um, areas that we could apply the seal in the field for light hydrocarbons. So uh, if any of you are interested in uh, a field trial, uh, we would talk to you further about going over the details of this product, what its capabilities are, um, and, and demonstrating um, and showing you some of the data in more detail that's been collected on it uh, to show you the proof of concept to make you comfortable with putting in the field. Thanks, Derek. Um, that's it for me. Uh, there's some questions also regarding uh, getting a copy of the presentation, Derek. Uh, I don't know if that was something that we could do. I think we're planning to upload it to the RATS uh, website in the future, right, Andrew? Oh, uh, well, yes, the, the, the video will be available. That's right. Um, so, yeah, true. That is the presentation. I think the, the, sl the slide deck as well, I think, is, is getting yeah, uploaded as well, I believe. Be it's going to be PDF version. Webinar. Um, it'll be a video, you know, available on GoToWebinar. So I think probably within an hour after uh, the presentation, it'll be uh, ready to view uh, at that point. Um, there's another question from Aaron McKay. McKay, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. I'll just unmute you if you want to ask your question. Sure. Hi, guys. Uh, I was just I was noticing that the uh, temperature limits were all listed as atmospheric here. Have you looked into going to higher temperatures? Is that limitation of the Micron? Uh, yeah, that right now, that uh, elastomer material would be the limitation for high temperature. It, we would, we're limited to what the capabilities are of Viton. Fortunately, I know I've had have had some requests from different uh, people asking if Calras might be available, and we haven't gone there yet. Um, I don't I don't know if we're going to go there yet. Um, there's been some discussion about it. I've heard there's difficulty molding calrise into this shape and maintaining the um, tolerant tight tolerances we're looking for for the fit um, with calrise it's a bit of a different molding process i've heard so they're they're challenged with how to do that a, re, a repeatability of doing that with calrise is what i've heard okay thanks yep. okay uh i think that's everything I've seen from the field out there. Um, well, thank you, thank you everyone for the for taking your time and spending it with us today to, uh, to learn a little bit about our new SEAL technology. Yeah, so there are, there are three handouts uh, with this uh, chat or with this presentation. Those are available. Uh, we'll also have information available on the website. Feel free to, to, to sign up on LinkedIn to join RATS as well, all of you, uh, if you haven't already. I assume most of you have, if you've heard about this. Um, it's good to uh, always uh, increase our membership on, on the LinkedIn site and make new contacts. Excellent. So thanks very much, Ralph and Derek. Um, you know, the, the test lab video was quite interesting. I've never seen, you know, insight into that. So, you know, for us uh, being able to see that from, from our office, from our home, that was great. Um, you know, I just wanted to recognize that, you know, there's a lot of familiar names uh, on the attendee list, uh, a lot of which, you know, aren't able to see, aren't able to participate in our regular RATS events due to, uh, you know, geography uh, being far away or, you know, just being busy on the road, that sort of thing. So thank you. And it's uh, great to see some familiar faces, and a lot of new faces. Um, you know, there's a lot of people from John Crane uh, in Ontario and Quebec, and obviously Edmonton as well on the line. Uh, some people from, you know, Saskatchewan, Abu Dhabi, Mumbai, Saudi Arabia, Algeria, and Qatar as well. So fantastic that we were able to reach uh, an international um, audience today. So, um, Anyways, uh, you know, check for the next technical session. Um, it's going to be June 18th, same time, same format.
Um, and if you have any other uh, presentations or, or anything, you know, let us know if you want to um, uh, present a topic. So uh, that's it for now. I don't have anything else to say. But uh, anyways, RATS is, is definitely about the people. You know, it's about um, the members and, and everybody uh, that, that participates. And, you know, I think I missed some some pictures in the in that collage there from, from the golf tournament from last year, but I tried to get all of them up there. I think I missed a few groups, but uh, anyways, you know, if there's been people that have been uh, part of RATS for a very long time, so uh, I think we'll continue strong. So uh, please remember to do the survey. Let us know if there's anything we can do better or anything you want to hear about. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Bye for now. Bye-bye.